Today I'm going to experiment with a teeny tiny version of that high elven shield. So before I go ahead and put fiberglass and whatnot and try this on the whole entire massive shield that took all this time to create, I put together a tiny version that kind of gives you the, the same types of obstacles that I'm going to face with the full size version but in a much smaller scale. So all this is is a scrap of that surfboard and I have hot glued some scraps of craft foam on top with the same types of patterns as is on the full size version. So I'm going to see if this will hold its shape around this mailing tube because I want to make sure that uh, one layer of fiberglass, I want to see if that's going to be enough to make that full size shield hold its shape. Right now it's kind of flopping all over the place and a little bit bowed in some areas. So for this test, I'm trying out some resin from ACP Composites. So this is their Easy Lamb, uh, two parts of course, it's an epoxy resin. Uh, these come with some caps that make it a little bit easier to dispense with a nozzle that you can just trim to a very small hole, which is great for me because I tend to be mixing lots of really small amounts of resin as I'm doing all these different experiments. So that's pretty handy. This is the first time I've used this particular resin, so I'm also testing if this resin is going to work well for my projects. So instructions are right on the bottle there. It's uh, 100 parts of part A to 44 by for part B. That's if you're going by weight. And there's also instructions there if you're going by volume. So having a scale that gives you really precise measurements, which is great when you're mixing small amounts like this, and just a tiny little cup. Those medicine cups are great for, again, for measuring small amounts of resin. I don't need to use a whole entire full-size mixing cup. And you can really get very precise with this nozzle tip on there. I was make, trying to measure out 4.4 grams here. so. And I have the uh, miniature version of the shield on the mailing tube, but the mailing tube is also inside a uh, an old piece of vacuum bag. And then I've just got another piece of the regular peel ply in the back too, just to make it kind of easier to handle. When I take it off the mailing tube, I can just leave that whole thing in there. Okay, so there's my very, very precise amount of part B. I'm going to go back and add the part one. I'm just used to starting with part B first because it tends to be the smaller amount. So I want to make sure that if I mess up on and I pour too much, I could just start over with a new cup. The part A tends to be easier to pour with these various types of resin. So now I'm just doing 10 grams of part A. Got to grab a stir stick. So this resin does have a tiny bit of a smell to it. I mean, I'm working outside, so I've got good ventilation. It's really windy out there. But you do catch just a, a slight whiff of the resin every so often. It has kind of a almost a fruity smell to it. I'm not sure why. It smells different than the other resin I've used. I guess it's just a different formulation. So now this just needs to be stirred really, really well. So I've got just a stir stick. Spent, I don't know, maybe about two minutes getting this very well mixed. Scraping the sides, scraping the stir stick itself. And it's a nice thin resin, so it's not too viscous. It's easy to wet everything out, so that's nice. I didn't glue the fiberglass down first in this case. I didn't really think of it, and it's just such a small piece. But looking back, it would have been easier if I had already stuck this down with some spray adhesive, maybe. Because I didn't kind of want to shift down and not want to stick in a few places. I also kept getting bristles in the resin, so just... Side note, I wanted to use the foam brush the next time because that was really annoying. And I just worked to press that piece of fiberglass as best I could down into the recesses of this little pattern that I created. And then at the end, once that was wetted out, I did trim off the excess. My original goal was to flip these edges around to the back to make sure that the side edges there were well covered also. Uh, but I found that the resin, even once the fabric was soaked with the resin, it didn't want to stick to the kind of powdery bits of foam stuck on the back. So I, in the end, just gave up and laid those edges out flat to trim off later. But that was another good thing to figure out ahead of time. You know, the edges need to be flipped over before you start adding the resin or it's not going to work. I did try a couple of times though. I really wanted those edges to be flipped around. But no, it didn't work. So next up, I'm putting a piece of the standard peel ply on top and just pressing that down a bit to get it kind of situated before it goes into the vacuum bag. And this is not a perforated 
peel ply at this point. That's what I'm trying first. So I put this into the bag. I've already got the uh, nozzle connection there to attach to the hose. So then I'm also just putting in some breather cloth so that it has a place to suck out all the air. And I'm going to hook that up to the ACP Composites AutoVac, which is very convenient because it does shut itself off automatically. You don't have to worry about the noise. For one thing, it's nice and quiet. Also, you can run it inside because there's it's oilless. And I also closed off that end there with the connector piece there. It's, it's a little bit hard to pop that inside of the kind of the sleeve that it goes with, just because I guess because I have small hands, but it does grip it really well. And of course you can just keep reusing it. So that's kind of nice. So I sucked out all the air in this. I kept pressing down <laughs> on the bag to get it situated. But uh, one thing I didn't notice at first was I needed to close off the other end of this tube. So it kind of got startled there and made a pop. It was actually the inner bag that popped. Still just kind of stretched the outer bag a bit. There wasn't enough to go all the way inside of the tube, but there was only a closing piece on one end. So I ended up just taping that off so that the bag wouldn't get sucked inside. Should have done that from the start, but I didn't notice. And I also just reinforced my outer bag a bit. It didn't have a hole in it, but just to make sure because it had been somewhat weakened by being stretched. And then I just sucked all that air out once more. So here's how it looks in the bag, all pressed down. It's definitely pushed that uh, glass fiber really well into all the edges. Vacuum system here is already turned off, so it's just going to maintain that. But I'm still noticing that there's kind of pools of resin in some areas because that peel ply is non-perforated, so any resin that's in there kind of doesn't really have anywhere to go if there's a little bit too much in some of those recessed areas. So I just popped it back out of the bag and I swapped it out for some perforated peel ply. I also put a sheet of the breather material on top so that could soak up any excess resin and just once again sucked all the air out, got it nice and vacuumed down, and I was pretty happy with it this time. You could see after I sat for a bit, some of that excess resin is starting to soak out into the breather cloth. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. So I think it gives it uh, a better chance of really sticking into the grooves there. So 24 hours later, we're going to pop this thing open. I'm just peeling off that breather cloth, which has some resin soaked into it. And it's looking nice. I'm going to take off uh, the peel ply to get this all cleaned up a bit. So there are a few wrinkles, uh, probably I'm thinking it's because I didn't glue down the fiberglass first. So definitely going to use some spray adhesive on the full size version so that, you know, that fiberglass isn't wanting to shift around while I'm getting the bags positioned. For that edge that I wasn't able to flip down, it's super easy just to trim off with scissors. It's just one layer of fiberglass, so it's not difficult at all to trim. And then of course I've got that piece on the back also. Not really necessary. It wouldn't have stuck to the bag, but just, I don't know. Seemed like a good thing to do. Now I've got to get rid of all those edges, which actually were not that not that sharp. Sometimes if you got thicker fiberglass with more resin, they can get very sharp, so you do have to be a bit careful. Scraped away any excess, trimmed it up nice and neat with a craft knife, and that was like an okay. The edges weren't perfect because I didn't have them flipped around from the start, but they were good enough for this test. Those wrinkles, I just kind of trimmed them away a bit. It wasn't great. Overall, it'd be nice if this were a bit flatter and if I can eliminate those wrinkles for the full-size version. But the concept worked quite well. There are some tiny little um, protruding bumpies where the uh, perforated peel ply, a little bit of resin gets sucked up in there, but I would rather have something that's slightly raised I can stand off than have it flipped around the other way and have dips in the piece. So I'm gonna do it that same way the next time. That's fine. That's easy to give it a, a bit of a sand. There was one area where the fiberglass didn't stick down. I think there was probably some surfboard wax left on that spot. I was not as careful cleaning this piece since it was just a test. So I just hot glued that down, added a couple of coats of filler primer and sanded that a bit just to see how much of this I could get smoothed out. And next I added a couple layers of gold paint. Then I kind of broke up that flat gold surface with some silver mixed in and then some couple shades of brown. Just starting to build up some layers to get a finish that looks kind of how it looks in the movie. And then kind of added some more shadows, added some black this time, brought in another shade of silver because really the piece isn't super super gold. I like that bright shiny like the first layer of gold. It just looks really odd with that. So 
I also sprayed this with a clear sealer after the coats of acrylic and now I'm just adding a bit of weathering and kind of textures with the oil paints to again make it look a little more like a, a realistic piece versus something that's just been painted bright gold. Um, I'm not even, I didn't even have any metallics for oil paint, so this is just a yellow ochre and black. And that actually worked pretty well. I think that's a type of finish I'm going to use probably in the final piece, although I think I do need to maybe grab some like gold rub and buff or something just to bring out those final highlights after this step. But overall, the finish came out pretty well just with using the supplies I had on hand. And the oil paints are great because you can just brush them on with paper towel and then buff it down to leave just as much as you want. So I'm, I'm definitely a fan of oil paints now after using them on the Drax blades a couple of videos ago. It was definitely a good idea to do a test piece because I got some kind of tips for doing the full size version. So I've already made my mistakes on the small one. Hopefully the next one will come out even better. And with the paint finish, I'm pretty happy with it. Although I think it needs a bit more gold to it because depending on the lighting, it looks more like it's just brown, but eh, it, I'm not sure. I'm going to kind of live with it for a bit and see where I want to go with the large version. So next up, I'm going to do the same process with the full size high open shield. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.